Hello, it's uh, Dr. Brian Holsey again from Foundations Chiropractic. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more. This is going to be our fourth video in our series. Last time we, the last few times we've been talking to you about thyroid tests, uh, how the thyroid hormone, how thyroid hormone actually functions in the body, and how it's metabolized, going through brain to thyroid gland, traveling through the body to the liver, and the small intestine to be converted to free T3 by way of. Uh, thyroid binding globulin. So thyroid binding globulin is a special protein or a taxi cab that takes thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland and carries it to the liver where some of these processes can happen. What's going to happen though if, if we have alteration of thyroid binding globulin? If we have increased thyroid binding globulin that's going to bind up more thyroid hormone uh, allowing for less thyroid hormone to be available to act down at the cellular level. So, sounds kind of confusing, but just bear with me. If we have decreased thyroid binding globulin, that's going to create more thyroid or free thyroid hormone, potentially. So some of the things that we need to look at if we have an increased thyroid binding globulin, one of the main concerns or main hormone issues in men is increased testosterone to estrogen. What, what's going to cause this is uh, blood sugar issues or insulin resistance, insulin and cortisol surges. All of those can increase an enzyme called aromatase, which is going to take increased test or it's going to take testosterone and create more estrogen from that. Now that estrogen in turn causes more thyroid binding globulin, which is going to decrease free thyroid hormone. This can also occur um, in males that, or females that are estrogen dominant or on hormone replacement, or we have liver issues where we're not clearing out hormone very well. The, and then the flip side, again, this is going to result in uh, decreased free thyroid hormone. The flip side of that is going to be a decreased thyroid binding globulin. With a decreased thyroid binding globulin, again, we're going to result in an increased free thyroid hormone. And so what can happen here? So blood sugar and cortisol issues and surges in women is going to do the opposite that it does in men. So this enzyme called 1720 lyase is going to be increased or it's going to be amped up when we have blood sugar, continued blood sugar and cortisol surges. What does this mean? Missing meals, continued stress, um, eating so much that we get tired. So th there's a lot of things that can play into that and then we'd, we'd find that out with a thorough history with you to find out if there are issues uh, that come up that may disrupt thyroid hormone metabolism and some of these other things that we, we need to address. So in women, again, the 1720 lyase enzyme is going to cause an increased conversion of estrogen to testosterone. So this in turn is going to cause a decreased thyroid binding globulin, which is going to cause an, in turn an increase of free thyroid hormone. Well, I mentioned on previous videos that free thyroid hormone is the most metabolically active. That's a good thing, right? Not necessarily. What can happen if too much thyroid hormone is that we uh, create cellular resistance. Imagine playing catch with somebody. You can play pretty well with that one person. Now line up 10 people and they're all throwing the ball at you at the same time. When that happens, we're going to cower. The same thing happens at the cellular level is that the the, the cells are going to pull back receptors there. So we're not going to have as much of an impact with the, the thyroid hormone. And if we have too much thyroid hormone, that's where we get the pulling back of receptors. And then speaking of cellular resistance, we talked about um, too much thyroid hormone, but we can also have inflammation be a factor. Inflammation can come from foods. Inflammation is actually the, the product of immune system activation. We talked about the immune system earlier, acting on the thyroid gland with thyroid antibodies. So if we have immune system activation, we have inflammation. So we need to check out the gut again to see where that inflammation is coming from. As well as if we have too, uh, if we have too much cortisol. So this cortisol again is released with stress. Any, uh, stress again is any change from normal physiology. So if we change away from normal physiology, that's going to produce a stress on the system which activates the adrenal glands which is going to kick up cortisol which negatively impacts the brain 
which is going to release less TRH, thyrotropin-releasing hormone, to act on the pituitary, less TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone, and then cortisol also acts on the liver, um, deactivating the, or dampening the impact of the 5' iodinase enzyme, so we have less T4 to T3 conversion. So many levels that cortisol can impact our physiology, but again, this is a lot to remember, it's a lot of physiology, that's for us to determine with lab testing. So we need to do these particular lab tests to figure out how much or where your body is malfunctioning. And the last thing, vitamin D is very important. It acts on all cells throughout our body. The, the main thing it can help with is increasing receptor sensitivity. So if vitamin D is altered, which is a fat-soluble vitamin, so if liver and gallbladder aren't functioning correctly, we're going to have altered fat metabolism. We're not breaking that down well. If the gut's not functioning properly, we're going to have altered fat absorption, fat and protein absorption, so we're going to have decreased fat-soluble vitamins. So hopefully with these little video series so far, we're, we're getting an idea of how the thyroid hormone metabolism can be disrupted. So today we looked at thyroid binding globulin and which can cause alterations in that as far as blood sugar issues in both men and women, estrogen, hormone replacement, um, men would probably be taking testosterone, but this, if we have liver issues, we're not clearing things. So this is uh, kind of finishing out our little series on thyroid hormone metabolism. This by no means is a, a full uh, explanation of thyroid hormones. But this gives you a little idea of what's happening here. I hope you enjoyed these so far. We're going to be adding to these as much as we can. Um, I briefly talked about cortisol surges and what that can do on the body, multiple levels of impact just with thyroid hormone, not talking about um, blood sugar resistance, insulin resistance, so some of those other factors that we'll get into as well. But again, I hope you enjoyed these. I'm Brian Holsey, Dr. Brian Holsey from Foundations Chiropractic in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Have a great day.